Huh? How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Two vapor barriers. Thank you so much on that. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good at it. I guess he's been doing it long enough now. He's got it. Sure. Well, there we go then, huh? Red light on, it must mean the microphone's working, huh? Hello, hello. Remember I, remember I quit, did? Okay. Voice red off. light, red light means stop. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll call the uh, airport committee meeting to order. Uh, February 23rd of uh, at 4 o'clock here, thereabouts, I guess. 401, it says there. So we'll start with any uh, agenda mem amendments. Have anything? Okay, then we'll move on to approval of the minutes. are listed in the packet here. Made as what you've seen here or to approve. Oops. Some there's always some idiot that doesn't take up shut up his phone. Well, if there's no uh, no changes to be made, I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Did move that, yes. Did you? I didn't hear you. So. Did a knock to my head. Oh, I'll do that next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second it. Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion is carried. Next up on the agenda is uh, citizens to be heard. <coughs> what else? Okay, we'll move on to the next thing then. Item five is consider the airfield name change request. And I think Christy has some information on that. So.
How about now? <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, sorry about that. Uh, continuation of a request from the October 27th meeting. Request was to rename the Moorhead Municipal Airport to include Florence Kling and Smith Field. Uh, we sent this out to comment to all T hangar tenants, private hangar, uh, MnDOT FAA, airport committee, mayor and city council, uh, historic review from the Clay County Historical and Cultural Society, as well as a news release and a Facebook post. The summary of comments starts on page three of your packet. Um, of the written comments re we received, we, uh, there was 29 in support and five that were not in support of the name change request. Um, I do want to note that if people submitted more than one of the same comment, like either yes, please rename or no, please don't, we only counted that as one. Um, there was no concerns raised from either the FAA or MnDOT Aeronautics and the Facebook comments were not included in the table, but I took a snapshot of those and those start on page four of your packet. Uh, generally, those comments were in favor of the proposed name change request. Um, so following any discussion from the committee or public comment um, today, I am looking for a recommendation either in favor or not in favor of the proposed name change request, which will then be forwarded to the mayor and city council for their consideration. Were there any additional costs involved with doing this? Was that ever looked into? Cost um, to the city? Not that I'm aware of. As far as I know, it's a uh, just more of a paperwork to the FAA for that name change request. Um, we wouldn't we, we wouldn't look at necessarily changing things like the sign right away, although the sign is something that needs to be replaced at some point in the future. So that was sort of already on the radar. Um, but other than that, I don't know of any additional costs. Yeah, the sign was, I guess, the reason I asked the question, um, if it's going to be advertised that way, the, the sign would need to be changed and the costs involved with that. Other comments on any other? Oh. Uh, the na uh, maybe that was uh, maybe I missed that, but the name Moorhead would continue to be in there also, right? Yes, the proposal is to rename it to Moorhead Municipal Airport, Florence Kling and Smith Field. <coughs> Have somebody to comment. From then and just wanted to just give me just a couple minutes to kind of share my ideas and thoughts with you. Um, the Moorhead Municipal Airport is our airport, Moorhead's airport, and the Moorhead citizens have shown overwhelming support of Florence and this proposal. From positive feedback or Facebook comments to an email support margin of 20 to 1, Moorhead citizens have spoken. Moorhead loves Florence and we want to honor her in this special way. Florence has sparked a community conversation and has put our airport in the spotlight. Since December, this idea has been featured on the front page of the extra, the front page of the Fargo form, and on three occasions it was discussed on WDAY news radio. Um, it's also been featured in both the National and Canadian 99's Facebook page and website. And in October, the Moorhead Airport was named the Airport of the Month by the Minnesota Flyers. Um, and the first two paragraphs of their story was all about Florence Klingensmith. And probably um, on a personal note, my favorite conversation I've heard so far come out of Florence Klingensmith and this idea is from a teacher at Moorhead Horizon School. Him and his students came across the, um, the newspaper article and there was a lot of interest in the classroom. So he took his class into the Moorhead archives at the school, they found Florence's report card and some other documents about Florence. And that's exactly why I propose this idea. It's to remember Florence, to celebrate Moorhead history, and to inspire a generation to dream and learn. Her life was cut short, but her dedication and determination to pursue her passion and dreams live on. She exemplified a pioneering spirit in pursuit of her aviation goals. She demonstrated amazing courage, 
In aviation's early days, when women were discouraged from entering the new and challenging field, she loved to fly and pave the way to open the skies for other women. Her story is important. Her accomplishments are worthy of this honor. In the words of New York Times bestselling author Keith O'Brien, you have a chance to right a historical wrong. By renaming the airport after Florence Klingensmith, you can reclaim our local hero and remind everyone who flies in and out of Moorhead about a great woman who dared to do amazing things. She was cherished once in Moorhead, and she could be again. Now it's up to you. Um, and just to briefly touch on I, the um, cost discussion, when I, when I um, was doing some research on this idea, I talked to the city manager of Faribault, Minnesota. Their airport did something similar for one of their cherished aviators, and the only cost incurred was the signage. And um, I can guarantee you that we'll have donors lined up to make that happen when the time comes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other comment? Um, if, if we vote for this, and it sounds like it, we will, uh, how about putting a, a sign in the pilot lounge there that explains a little bit about who she is and a little bit history? I would agree with that also. I guess I'd make, make one comment, uh, a couple of comments and one comment. Uh, one, I think it's a, a, a good idea. Uh, history has always been one of my favorites and uh, uh, a little bit of history on this. I remember way back when there was a Moorhead City Councilman, Martin Pinckney, who wanted and wanted and wanted to have an airport out there as opposed to the grass strip over there. And uh, so this airport is, means a lot to a lot of different people and, and, and something, something uh, that brings out Florence's contribution to not only Moorhead, but to uh, aviation is uh, I think a fine idea and we should also uh, also try and think up something for this summer, fall, whenever we have our air show, we can get that all done to have a, a something special for, for Florence as well, too, who's kind of fits all in with this, so we can get her done. That's my comment. Anybody else? Uh, uh, I'll entertain motion. I will move that we approve the uh, name change. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Airport minimum standards says there. I think that's a Christy thing too now. <laughs> Thank you. So um, throughout the last few years, we've had a number of standards developed to ensure safe and effective use of the airport. And as we've been talking through these, we thought it would be a good idea to combine everything into one document. And then there was a few additional things that the committee has been discussing as well. So at the last meeting, we formed a minimum standards working group. So I wanna thank Gerald who's here and Ryan who's not here today, as well as the airport management staff um, who helped us uh, work through some of the questions and some of the new standards in this document. 
Um, like I said, many of the standards that you will see when paging through the minimum standards are not new, they're existing. We've just never had them in one document before. Um, but there are a few new ones proposed. So what I would like to do is walk through some of those new standards <coughs> um, and then just see if the committee has um, any discussion on those, um, if there's anything that you want the working group to go back and look at, um, any, any questions or comments. So um, as you go through the minimum standards, everything that is new has a red box by it, specifically on pages three and four are the two new standards that I'm gonna touch on briefly here. Um, so the first standards are related to T hangers and more specifically south facing T hangers. Um, it was recognized by the working group that the south facing hangers are better equipped for winter flying. Um, so there was a few proposals that were requested uh, within the document. Um, the first is that when someone moves out of a south facing hangar, that preference be given to existing tenants who are frequent winter flyers. Um, right now we do have a, um, a, it's called a south facing hangar waiting list. So all of our existing tenants can be um, placed on that list. So when one becomes available, um, we would call our existing tenants first um, before new tenants at the airport. Um, so this would just um, recognize those who fly a lot because those hangars um, do have that capability in the winter more than the north facing ones. The second thing that the working group took a look at was again recognizing that the south facing hangers uh, have, are more attractive to people who fly in the winter to potentially looking at a monthly lease increase of $15 per month starting in January of 2023. Um, so hangar one would go from, again this would be south facing hangers only, uh, 145 to 160. Um, hangers two and three are currently 155 a month, they would go to 170 and then uh, we are recommending a no change to hangar four. Um, those rates are, are currently higher because it's a new hangar. Um, and most of those have a, a storage unit rate attached to them as well. So they're um, up in the mid 200s already. So before I go on to the apron new recommendations, um, any questions or comments or thoughts about those proposed new standards for the south facing T hangers. Um, why are they, is it the sun melts the snow better in front of them? Okay. Yes, yep. Correct, yep. Hangar doors facing south. questions not part of it That's okay yep. um, and then the next group of standards is related to um, tie down parking on the apron and what these are is areas on the existing ramp or apron where an aircraft that doesn't have a hangar space or is just stopping for the day um, can tie down their aircraft. Um, we are, the working group recognized that long-term apron parking when an aircraft is not flying um, can at times result in difficulty with maintenance and it also removes tie down spots from other airport flyers and visitors. So there was three proposed standards that the working group is asking the committee to consider. Um, the first is that the aircraft might, must be licensed and operable. And in talking with Jerry before the meeting, probably the better, better word is airworthy. 
um, so licensed and airworthy. The second proposed standard was that the aircraft must be moved at the request of the airport manager for maintenance. Um, this could happen in the summer because we do occasionally have a sweeper come out, but would be more needed in the winter for snow maintenance. And then the third consideration would be a $15 per day ramp fee for anyone who's parked there without flying for more than seven days. Um, so basically that would mean on day eight, um, you would be charged the fee. Um, again, that wouldn't be for people who are flying in and out. It would be for an aircraft that um, is not, is parked continuously. Um, I do want to also point out um, at each of your stations, there was uh, an email that was sent by Craig, um, Craig Sutter and asked that I print that out and provide it to the committee members as well. So you'll see that in front of you. And opening it up to any questions, comments, thoughts on those standards for apron parking. This, so the first seven days, they wouldn't pay anything? Correct. So if somebody comes visiting here over a weekend, they wouldn't have to pay? Correct. $15 a day uh, for one month would be, four, what is that, $450 a month? which is three times what we charge for hangar rent. Is it just to discourage people from tying it down or? Uh, it's just recognizing that if you're not flying your aircraft frequently, um, that you're also tying it up for other, other users to be able to use it. Um, and then it can, especially in the winter, cause maintenance issues for the manager. So that was sort of the, the overall, um, and Jerry, you can add anything. I don't want to speak totally for the working group here since we have a member, um, but it was just the overall difficulty with maintenance and then just making sure that we're providing a good place for people to fly in and out of. Does this fall somewhere along industry standards as far as other airports, what they do or? Was there any search on that or? There wasn't really any standard that I found. Um, it really varies between airport to airport. So some might have a parking fee if you're there for X amount of hours. Some have overnight fees. Um, it, it was different between all airports. Generally, I didn't see any that were like over $20, $25. You know, most of them were, seemed to be about that $10, $15 range. I fly in and out of um, Rocky Mountain International in Denver on occasion, and they charge me $15 a night. Correct. Day. Even first day. Even the first day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But is that commercially owned ramp space? No, actually, I'm, I'm parked in a general aviation area, but that area is maintained by the name changes, but Denver Air was there most of the time, and and that's just a, a fee set up, and that's what you paid, or you made arrangements to find a private on the airport, another hangar or area by a hangar, which is always difficult. It's been a while for me, but uh, I think I read somewhere in here the part about it, well, if you buy gas, we won't charge you for an overnight hangover in space and, or a tie down space. They'll give you a discount of maybe, if you went for five days, they'd probably knock one off if you put on fuel. Yeah. But then they also have cheaper fuel on weekends, so you can request to have it filled over the weekend also. So you can save some there. But the problem out at the Morehead Airport is basically maintenance. And if an airplane is not airworthy or certified, um, it can't fly. So it's got to sit someplace. And if the owner of the aircraft is not um, 
in a position or prompted to, to do something with it, it just sits. Bill, Bill. Yeah, so, uh, so if somebody, I don't know how often this would happen, but if somebody wants to come up and visit for two or three weeks, they'd have to pay quite a bit for having the airplane tied down there, huh? Unless they fly. If they fly during their visitation, you know, if you're flying every couple of days, it's just for those aircraft that do not move. But yes, if they are not flying it over that seven days, they would have to pay the $15 per day. So you could just fly every seventh day? Well, essentially, I, I assume the theory is here that we eliminate the tied down aircraft that's got one flat tire and, and, and yeah. fall out in the ground and things like that. But I would. I would like to see that stretch to 14 days. Uh, <coughs> In some cases, I don't think that the number of days is going to make any difference depending on a particular airplane or the owner of that airplane. I, I, you know, I've been there ever since day one. And Ryan could probably attest to that. I don't, I don't know of, I, I don't think I could pick out an airplane that sat there for more than seven days other than one that ever sat there that long without flying. And some were there for that week or 10 days or two weeks, but they were actively flying. Yeah, I can uh, confirm that. Five or five and a half years I've been out there, um, seven days is absolutely the most. But, you know, 14 days, I, I understand that. The whole theory would be to discourage planes from being left at the airfield. Uh, no airport wants to be the one that turns into an airplane graveyard. And there's, you go online and there's different websites, uh, different owner forums where you see, it, uh, you know, the, the derelict planes multiply. You just get one, and then there'll only be another one sitting beside it, and next thing you know, you've got the back side of the ramp filled with airplanes that have uh, flat tires and critters starting to set up nest inside, and you know, we, want to, we want to discourage that. If the airplane were certified and actively flying, it, then it could fly, I'll just use the 14 days, but he could fly every 14th day and he'd pay nothing, but yet we have to put up with the airplane sitting on the ramp and in, in the middle of everything, or seven days, he could fly every seventh day and then he starts over again. That's the way I, that's the way I would read it. Did you say third day, every third day? You said every three days? Every, well, he, no, he actually, you brought up 14 days, correct? Uh, he, yeah, he brought up 14, 14 rather than seven. Oh, okay. I thought he said three, and I was going to say, wow. No, no, no. <laughs> Misunderstood you. <laughs> and I'm not so sure that there would be anybody that would deliberately do that, but that's always possible that if, in, 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 in the case of an airplane that's out there now, it's not certified and it's not airworthy, so it can't fly. So I don't know what a person would do after seven days other than pay, because he can't fly it. But a, an airplane that could fly, could fly every 14th day or every seventh day and not incur any expenses. Yeah. And, yeah, it well, isn't, we, and like, the expense like isn't you. a big deal, it's the problem with especially the winter time with snow removal. It's a real pain to work around an aircraft. Yeah, any other comment <coughs> on? So two questions, um, Ryan, do we actually have lots of people that tie up for more than seven or 14 days? Um, no, um, I I can't think of a single plane that's been there for 
more than five days that hasn't actually flown. It's, you know, you'll, you'll get in the middle of summertime uh, or the 4th of July weekend, for example, there'll be planes that come in, they'll drive over to deal or whatnot. But yeah, as far as long term, nah, doesn't happen. I would be surprised if we ever collected <laughs> for the eighth day. Yeah, exactly. So the other question, I guess, um, I appreciate the, the correspondence with um, Mr. Sutter from Big Sky. Um, I really was not able to understand exactly what his concern was. I, I, he, he, he expressed a, a bunch of things that had to do with legality of charging. I thought you answered those, Director Leshevsky, um, quite fine. Um, so I, I'm not really sure what the underlying concern was. And I'm not sure if that's something that you know or, or someone knows. Um, Mr. Sutter has an airplane there that's not airworthy, uh, is out of annual, can't fly, and it's been at the airport for, what, three years now, Ryan? It's been sitting outside for three years. Three, three years. He parks on the ramp and it sits there every day. And the only time it moves is when we request that he move it in the winter time and it has been moved the last two winters and has been put off in a grassy area and it'll stay there now until spring but if we don't adopt some sort of regulation in regards to this it'll be back on the ramp when spring comes and it'll sit there all summer now summer is a normally a problem uh, we don't have to get out there with equipment and do a lot of moving but if we didn't say anything at all, it would stay there during the winter, which it has. It's it sat out there for the winter. Yeah, I think the first winter it did sit out or on a tie down spot. And then you have to move snow around it. So then the snow ends up being two, three foot deep all the way around it when you take the equipment and push the snow and it couldn't move then anyway. Uh, whether unless he moves the snow, but <clears throat> and he's decided that it's it's not legal for us to do that, but we've solved that problem by uh, what Christy has done with the FA, and so we get it into the into the program. You know, get it into the minutes, get it into the package. We can, we can. That's what we're talking about: the seven days. Right. So I, I was not aware of who who owned that air, airplane. Yeah. Now now it makes a lot more sense, and. Um, I guess, you know, if you, if you park your boat in a public marina, um, you get charged a slip fee. If you park your car on streets, certain streets have parking fees. So um, we're essentially just extending that, that situation. Okay, thank you. Stop and think in the city of Moorhead, you can park your car in the same spot for six days and the seventh day you gotta move it. Exactly. No. Correct. And the um, the idea of uh, a plane at risk of getting damaged during snow removal in the wintertime, that's real. It doesn't take much to be paying attention to one part of the airplane, making sure you don't hit it, and you end up hitting another part. And then who's liable for that? You know, it, it happened to us. Uh, there was that Baron that sat outside for years and years, and well, it's finally gone now, but uh, we were clearing snow around it, and the guy running the plow was watching the propeller to make sure he wouldn't hit that, it ended up hitting the radome, and that cost me $2,000 to fix it. So, you know, if it happens with the city equipment, who's liable for it then? Is it there, or is the city gonna be on the hook to get the plane fixed, or? <clears throat> so. Something else uh, in the stories here telling about moving the plane off to the grassy area, is there any, I mean, we don't wanna, start parking dead airplanes around here and there and everywhere. <laughs> we really don't have a city grass tie down area, do we, Chrissy? No. It's not designated. So no. it's right now it's put behind the large hangar on the west end, Marvin Fletcher's storage hangar. And uh, it's a nice area to park, but yeah, you wouldn't want to have two, three, four or five of them back there because then you got mold problems too. And, and there was no permission granted from the city for that to happen. Yeah, the owner of the aircraft took that upon himself to put it back there this winter. I told him he was in a no-win situation. <laughs> you know, he had to do something, so he, he did move it. I guess if it was part of his rental property, per se, 
lease property, then <laughs> you know he could do that without regulation. Well, but he can't the, the just pick a nice spot and put down some anchors and. Yeah, the, the, the thing about that though, the lease only covers a certain distance outside of the build, the foot of the building, well, and I he's I didn't know what and that he's was. he's well outside of that, so yeah. he's on airport property that's being mowed and you know cleared of snow if it need be. Um, there was some in, in all the email exchange uh, about whether we can legally charge money, and I, I think I heard you say something about well, what's the what is the uh, story on that. So, from what I understand from my initial conversations with the FAA, is that the answer is yes. Um, I did send another email today with some of the information that was relayed um, in the email just to double check. Um, but everything that I've been told is that the main thing we need to do is have it clearly outlined in a minimum standards document so that it applies to everyone on the airport. Um, what we cannot do is say, uh, you have to pay $20 per day and nobody else does. We have to have clear and fair standards that apply to everyone who uses the airport. Can we, with regard to the parking on the grass, can that be prohibited or in some way controlled? I mean, if, if the person does push his airplane over on the grass, does he still pay $15 after eight days? Or? No, we, we won't allow that anymore. Okay, and we're, we're, <laughs> anno we're allowed to not allow it. Right, it, it, it's not a designated parking space right now. Okay. In fact, you have to keep the grass mowed to a certain height and that, that can, sometimes you have to mow more frequently than six days or seven days. And if you got to sit long term in the grass, mice are going to start putting nests in it. Just a matter of time. I'm sure there's probably um, a business opportunity for Kobash Marine and Air to, you know, come and store your plane for you somewhere. I'm smiling behind the mask. So uh, the next step is to, um, I assume, recommend approval. Is this something that the board can actually just approve or does it have to go to the city council? Um, so because it does have fee changes, I would like to take it to the city council and then we'll also have to amend the fee schedule accordingly. Um, so what I'm looking for would be a recommendation um, to take it to the city council. Um, again, I, I, I will plan on making that change to aircraft must be licensed and airworthy. Um, so I would, I would like the recommendation just to acknowledge that. And then if there is any change on the number of days, that would need to be in the motion as well, because right now uh, the policy is recommending uh, seven days. I'll make a motion that we send it to the city as it's written at the $15 on the eighth day. With the one change to airworthy. Correct. Yeah. Right. With the change to air, unairworthy. No, I'll second that. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried to present it to the uh, city council. <coughs> Thank the committee for their work, by the way. Much left on the agenda. It was kind of a short one. Uh, airport report. Well, we were on track for a really good year um, for fuel sales and then winter hit. <laughs> so yeah, people aren't flying right now, so we haven't sold that much fuel, but yeah, um, if you look at the numbers, it's uh, fourth best year since 2007. So 
things are looking up. A lot of a lot of activity out at the airport. It's good to see. And then uh, there's going to be a one of those new Cirrus jets is going to be based at our field here. Uh, but from what I heard, it's going to be here at the end of the week. So we're going to have a jet operating out of there. I'm not. I got nothing else. Do you have an idea of why? I mean, I noticed that also when I was looking at this. Like, whoa, this this is. A lot is just people were cooped up after pandemic, or was well. <coughs> the economy was really good this year, you know, so just people are flying. Um, it's about the only thing I can come up with. And then yeah, come December time, you can see it dropped off to only 265 gallons because it's too cold and you know, it gets below zero, and you don't want to go flying then. I thought it was kind of economy people cooped up. Like, hey, why not? Yep, and then plus with uh, the airline uh, pilot shortage, uh, people are interested in taking flying lessons. So, you know, a lot of that gas was uh, in flight training. Cool. And people just wanted to go fly around. How much is that gas right now? Uh, right now we're sitting at 460 a gallon, I believe. And we bought 5,400 gallons in advance back in December before prices started going up. So for, you know, until we burn through 5,400 gallons, we'll probably be the cheapest around. Further discussion or anything? I had one more quick update. Um, we recently heard from MnDOT that our AWOS system, our air weather system, is going to be replaced. So the great thing is that MnDOT pays for the AWOS infrastructure itself, um, but the current location does not meet minimum standards. So we're working with um, Jeff and the Mead and Hunt team to potentially find a new location for the FAA to look at. Um, there's some studying and analysis related to that, um, and then it would go to the next steps of uh, doing things like environmental review, um, easements from property owners, that sort of thing. Um, so I'll, we'll definitely keep the airport committee um, <coughs> in the loop as far as where that might potentially be moved, what that might look like, future timelines, um, but that one is one that sort of came out of nowhere as MINDAP was able to procure that equipment. Um, so we're we're looking at that now. Where is that located now? Um, currently, it is west of the snow removal equipment building when you come into the airport. Is it on a tower or a house? <coughs> yes. Yep. That's a tower just west of the maintenance driveway. Building. The maintenance building. Yeah. Uh. And that's not a good spot for it, or? It does not meet standards because of the building. You're worried about variances in wind direction, I, I would assume, based on the size of the building <coughs> and distance from it. Wind doesn't blow here, it sucks. Living in North Dakota, it used to be Montana, Bozeman, Minnesota. <laughs> so uh, I'm assuming that's going to be a long process. <coughs> uh, Jeff can correct me if I'm wrong, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was in that 10 to 18 months, yeah. Sounds like there was several sessions of back and forth required yet. Correct. Yeah. And then uh, what the airport is responsible for is just making sure that the infrastructure to service the AWOS gets extended, you know, so things like electric might need to be extended to the new location, so. Do you have anything else? Motion to adjourn, then. 
So moved. Second. Favor. Aye. It is adjourned. Thank you Thanks all everybody. very much. <clears throat>